okay new video my name is Marty and welcome to another C++ programming video about video games in this video we're gonna be doing part 30 of the series hope you had a wonderful Merry Christmas I sure did we always have some like fun Christmas traditions that we do like one of them is we make like a ton of donuts like I think we made like 200 this year the other thing we do is instead of having like a dry crispy dry turkey we always go with a, like a two inch fat steak and if you're wondering what i'm wearing around my neck they're dog tags they're pretty cool they're my yo yo dog my in the hood here's my hoodie there in the hood so yeah with that said let's start coding okay here's the game where i left it last video as you can see uh, my screen recorder is kind of gl probably glitching a little bit shaky and i don't have the best computer in the world it's fairly good, but it's not the best, so that's probably why. So in this video, we're going to be drawing these platforms using vertex arrays, which is faster, although more difficult. All right, so let's get started. So control N, and we're going to create a new C++ header file. So go over to player.hpp, copy all that, control C, go to back to untitled, control V, and instead of player, we shall call this platform. So essentially what we are doing here is we're copying the function of the player.hpp header file we were copying the drawing function and we're just pasting in here because it's going to work pretty much the same the only difference is we're going to delete the void update and create a void in it because the way we're doing it we cannot initialize our values in the constructor it's just not going to work that way so we're going to have to create an initialize function so we can just copy these parameters control x and paste them all right in there control v and with that we just delete Delete on ground. No, no need to have it because we're not we're not colliding with ourselves because we're all. This is the ground. It's the platform. So we if we go Control Shift Save. We want to save this and in include save it as platform dot hpp not cpp. Be sure it is hpp because it's a header file and not a source file. So hit save. So go Control N. Create another new document. And this will be the C++ source file. So we can essentially copy the first chunk of our C++ of our player C++ source file. Control C, paste it into Untitled. Control V. And now instead of including this player, we're gonna go platform.hpp, which is the platform header file. So now again, instead of player, we just go platform, and we just go platform here as well. So now let's scroll down and we're going to create a new function, which we go void and we go platform, use the unary scope resolution operator, which just says that when we're talking about init here, it belongs to the platform class. And we're just editing it, not in the declaration, which takes place over, yeah, over here. So it's saying, um, excuse me, we're just editing it over here. If that's all right, their compiler and compiler is like, yeah, that's fine. Just make sure you say so. So that's why we have the two dots. So take out this parameter because we're not going to use it up here and paste it in down there control v and take out all of this except for we can let it initialize let the constructor initialize a little control x and paste it all in here once we open up some curly braces control v and go backspace one and now we should be good as gold just take out the unnecessary spaces make it look all nice make sure we have no unnecessary spaces at the end Control save and we'll save this in our source files folder and we'll call this platform.cpp except with a little p just to keep it looking good. Save. Okay, so it looks all good. Let's go to main.cpp. We're going to want to include our new header file. So go hashtag include and open up some quotations dot dot forward slash include and plat form.hpp scroll down and but wait before we scroll down let's take out these two function these two objects no or classes no need to have them so it should look all nicely like this now if we scroll down we can also take out these lines of code because they're just cluttering it up no need to have them all right so, and now let's begin by creating a um integer array a 2d integer array so let's go int level array and we will make it a 2d array and it's going to be 10 wide and it's going to be 10 tall so to do a 2d array it's pretty much like a 1d array 
The only difference is you just add another set of square braces. So that set that equal to curly braces. And inside here, we're going to want more curly braces. And then we're going to want to go 0, 0. And now we're going to want to repeat this line 10 times because, again, 10 wide, 10 tall. So control C. That's 10 times. So in that line with the semicolon. And now inside here, if we want to have a platform, we just add a 1 and just add as many ones as you want. So one is a platform, zero means nothing at all. That's the way we're going to interpret this data. This alone is just an array of integers, nothing special about it. We just need to interpret this data now. So what we do is first we need to create a platform. Now this is the actual array of our, of our platforms and we'll call this one level. And we'll make it 100 big because 10 times 10 equals 100 possible platforms in that line with a semicolon. And let's create a integer called size of array. And we want this integer, this variable kicking around because we need to know how many platforms are inside this array because for calculations later on, there probably is an easier way of doing that, which would be to actually just use the size of function in C++, but I like to code so that you start simple, do the most basic way you can of doing it, and then later on actually just make it more complicated. Like if you see a better way later on, perhaps a more efficient way, then do it then, but don't try and do too many things at once. Lesson learned the hard way. And now we're actually gonna interpret this data to say where, this just basically is giving us the coordinates of where we want these platforms. So let's create a for loop to do that. And we wanna go for, and it's common to go with i. So int i equals zero and add a semicolon i must be less than 10 and i plus plus so this code only runs 10 times that's what the for loops for open up some curly braces and inside here create another for loop and we go for int j it's common to use j in the second for loop in a 2d for loop and equals zero j must be less than 10 as well to make sure it doesn't go over 10 and i plus plus or j plus plus so these, with these two for loops combined, this code will only ever happen at the most 100 times, but it'll only happen as many platforms as we have in our array, which is exactly what we want it to. So now we need if statement because the, we only want this to run if the level, um, and then we go, or level array, I should say, don't wanna do that, so array. So if each or the element we're at in the array, which in this case would be, uh, which in this case would be I, and then we want to go J because it's a 2D array. So we have to specify. So, okay, which row? So, um, we'll go say, or which column, um, we'll go, um, this column and which row, uh, that row so that it picks out an individual member, which is what we want. So if that is equal to one, then this line of code or these two lines of code will run, which is where we initialize our platform. So we go uh, level and then we open up some square braces and size of array probably should change that to level just so it's more concise, clear to the point, change that to level as well. Dot initialize to initialize it and open up some square uh, parentheses, I should say. And inside here, the first parameter we're going to give it is the location of where texture is. So in my case, if I go to include, uh, not include, it's in resources, images, and I have grass underscore one, a PNG file that is a 15 by 15 image. So this is going to be, now this is relative to where this code is running from, to where games are running from. So keep that in mind, forward slash images, forward slash uh grass underscore one dot png first argument is just the texture file to use and now the actual location which will be starting with i multiplied times 15 so it's 15 pixels apart from each other so they're not all stacked up on top of each other and then j multiplied by 15 as well and 15 by 15 which this is width because that's what we declared it to be uh, that should almost do it and that line with the semicolon and then we want to go size of level and we want to increment it by one every time this chunk of code runs 
So now we just actually have to draw it. Let's also make some revisions to the code as we go. Uh, first one being that we do not want to draw player obj dot update. Uh, whoops, we don't want to. Yeah, don't want to draw that either. We don't want to create those uh, objects. So scroll down. Should look look all like this. And right here, we just need to draw. That's the final step. So instead of five, we go size of level. So that this only happens as many platforms as there are that exist. Window dot draw. And in this case, we'll go with I. And with that, we should be drawing on the screen. So control save. Make sure all the other files are saved if you're using a text editor like me. And give her a run. And one error I see is on platform.hpp. Uh, yeah, we forgot to change that over. You probably, yeah, sometimes you guys probably catch stuff that I don't. One more thing, platform uh, main.cpp. Uh, we're drawing, yeah, the we're drawing a player that does not exist. So that was the last error message I saw. Should be all good to go. And we should be drawing correctly. So I'm going to move down because I, oh, there we go. So that's the one that's in the air. And that one... Yeah, so this is mirrored and it's not oriented correctly. Tells me we did something wrong. I believe this should be a J and then an I. Don't know why, but probably got them backwards. So now if we move all the way down, pressing the down button, we should be running into our platforms, which, yep. And you'll notice that this looks exactly the way we programmed it. So you can see here, if I go side by side, that the level array and the level look pretty much identical. All right, so you can edit the level to your likings now. In the next video, what we're going to be doing is colliding with these platforms. So, which is definitely harder when you're using vertex arrays, although it's faster and more efficient. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any code improvements or comments, just leave it in the comment section. I do appreciate code suggestions. I'm always learning too. So, with that said, I'll see you next video. Um, yeah, <laughs> it was recording. I already did this video like twice because I was like, oh, I'm recording the face. I hit record over here and then I didn't record the screen. And um, yeah, so it's just yabbering at a screen and it wasn't recording. So, so yeah, hopefully this works. I hope.